It's The Cube. Here is your host, Jeff Crick. Hi, Jeff Rick here. We're on the ground at Node Summit 2015 in San Francisco at the Mission Bay Conference Center. I think this is the third year they've had Node Summit. It's growing. We weren't here, or the last time we were here was 2012, so a long time ago. We're excited to come out and see what's going on. We're joined by our next guest, Scott Hammond, President and CEO of Joint. Welcome. Well, thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. So, like I said, we were here a long time ago, 2012. A lot has changed in the world since 2012 in terms of mobile, cloud, it's a very, very different times. Yeah, it's a great time to be in tech. There's so many new changes, new technologies, and new applications. And one of the great things, uh, one of the great trends in technology is you see it becoming more accessible to a broader audience of people. Uh, and that means that there's new innovations in brand new areas. We keep pushing the boundaries and pushing the edges, whether it's from the data center out to mobile, to web, to internet of things, to robotics. It, it's, it's great, it's still a great time to be in tech. So that said, why did you come to join? You're relatively new, there's a lot of opportunities out there. What about this particular opportunity was attractive to you? Yeah, well, a couple of things, great question. So, um, so first of all, this whole uh, expansion and proliferation of technology, uh, you know, Joint has been the steward of Node.js for the last five years now, and you know, Node has really pushed the boundaries and helped to bring in a new set of developers, new, new innovations, new applications, so I really wanted to be part of Node. Uh, the other part is what we're doing in our core technology stack. We were talking a little earlier about containers. You know, Joint's been a big user of containers in production at scale in our public cloud software and our on-prem uh, cloud software, letting people deploy containers securely at scale with bare metal performance. It, and I looked at what Joint was doing and I thought that for the last 15 years, virtual machines uh, have really been dominating the abstraction for data centers for the last 15 years. And right. it's about time that there was a new innovation there. And I think containers is it. Containers right. is going to disrupt virtual machines, much more efficient use of resources, much faster, supports the DevOps and microservices trends. So uh, that, that's, uh, we've been one of the early pioneers of containers, right. running them at scale. And I think that, that's the future. So to me, it was a big bet on containers in the future as the new abstraction. So many places we can go. So let's talk a little about hybrid cloud, because yep. Joint was early in the hybrid cloud. Uh, Pat Gelsinger from VMware at, at, at VMworld said hybrid is really the answer. Um, and then of course we had Larry at Oracle Open World basically validating cloud is good, so now everybody's Those off to the races. actually agreed on Absolutely. something, that's amazing. But, but you guys are early on. How do you define hybrid cloud? And you know, there's still, everyone always talks about hybrid, private, in public, yeah. how do you see kind of the adoption out in, in your customer base? Um, so, you know, another great question. So we've seen public cloud has been getting a lot of interest. Uh, huge growth, AWS, Google, right. Amazon, uh, you know, Microsoft, they've had great services out there for a while, and very competitive space. It's gotten a lot of attention because it's a new way to sort of consume your data center services as a service. So right. that, that's right. been really convenient for developers. Um, but that is a pretty small percentage of the overall IT spend. Most of the IT spend is still in the data center, on-prem, running not only legacy apps, but all kinds of new applications. It just Some just have to be on-prem. So, right. so we believe that the public cloud is here to stay and on-prem solutions are here to stay. So if you're an enterprise and you're trying to find a new model to deploy your solutions, you, you often want to deploy your applications in both. And so uh, what's happened you know, historically is the private cloud vendors have tried to find a way to do some stuff on-prem. Uh, the on-prem providers have tried to take their stack and try to find a way to connect up to the public cloud. But it's been pretty cumbersome for the user. So, so a couple of big things here that, that are happening. One is you know, our perspective has been we started in the public cloud and we took our software that does all the management and the orchestration, the automation, the billing, the user management, right. everything that runs our public cloud, we shrink it down into a memory stick so you can plug it into a rack of computers and at two hours later, like poof, that whole right. rack of computers is now a private cloud with the same tech stack, same APIs, same, same, it looks identical. You have no idea that it's not your public cloud. So it's just another availability zone for your cloud. So, so we have that complete consistency for processes and skill sets and applications and APIs. So that's been kind of a new innovative way for us to go approach this that you know, our customers love. So they can run some on-prem and then some off-prem and get, get the benefits of both. Interesting. So then another big thing is open source, right? And, and Linux obviously been around a long time. Open source has been around a long time. Uh, you know, there's always been the Node.js project as an open source project, but you guys have taken the open source um, 
medicine one degree further, right? So talk a bit yeah. about that announcement and how you guys decided to open source more of your stuff. Yeah, as you say, uh, we've been stewards of Node.js now for a while, and that, that's been you know, our primary open source project that we've been involved with. Uh, we have another, a couple other projects that have been open source, but most of our software historically has been sort of proprietary or closed source software. Right. Um, and you know, we we do, we believe so firmly in open source as a model. And the w when you really get to know the different communities in open source, there's such a powerful, entitled uh, o you know, p group of people who feel such ownership around what they're building. And so to be able to take the power of community and wrap it into your software and have them help you build, develop, fix, extend, you know, add on to your software and be part of the core development, it's, it's extremely powerful. It lets us innovate faster. Uh, so it's a big, big incentive for us. And then you know, we also see uh, most companies now have kind of an open source first policy where right. they want to see that the, that the code is supported by a large public community. They want to see that there's rapid innovation. They want to see an easy way for them to support the software and have other people help them support it. And it's, it's an easy way for them to adopt it, get support on it, and then experiment, learn it, try it, evaluate it, prove it, and then scale it out. So it's, it's very beneficial to us for additional development cycles, and it's really beneficial for the customers who, who, who see that as a really sort of the new way, sort of the standard way that they're now starting to uh, adopt technology. So last kind of category is really mobile. And, and we talk a lot about, we, we cover a lot of shows, the consumerization of IT, and really how the, the better IT has been available for the consumer via some of these big guys like Amazon and Google, and the yeah. expected behavior and the way applications interact with me, the availability of those things, and the ease of which they act, has been really interesting. So yeah. talk a little bit about you know, this really mobile impact. I mean, the keynote, they're talking about milliseconds response time, it's really all driven by mobile, isn't it? Yeah, mobile is kind of the new thing. It's, it's the new frontier, mobile, social, new ways to interact with customers and suppliers, and then devices with the whole IOT phenomenon. So now there's so much more data and so many more transactions and interactions that are outside of the four walls of the enterprise that it's driving new innovation, new interaction points, and uh, mobile devices are it. And uh, so that, that's a great innovation area. And then as you say, you know, if you're, you, you pull up your, your iPhone or your, your Android device, and the applications there, are, are they're, they're a lot easier to use. It's really uh, personalized, it's localized, it's interactive. Uh, it's a much richer experience than most people are used to from their corporate applications. Um, so it's driving this sort of consumerization of IT that's starting to get rolled back into applications that are built inside the four walls. Right, but right. you know, mobile is huge. It, right. There's uh, how many four billion devices out there now. So right. you know, growing astronomically. So th that that's the new frontier. Right. So last question: What are kind of your uh, priorities for 2015? What are you guys working on uh, that you're excited about? Uh, so a couple of things. So one is we just announced a foundation. We're working with a group of organizations for a foundation for Node.js. So I think that's going to be a real positive push to, to support this rapid adoption and acceleration we're getting around Node. Uh, second thing for us is, uh, we talked about Docker earlier. I see Docker as a, a, a very important uh, uh, construct through development, and now enterprises are trying to understand what the best runtime platform is to run that, whether it's on bare metal or run it on a virtualization platform. So, so our stack, we were talking about earlier, uh, it's based on containers, so you can run these containers securely on bare metal. You know, that's a big push for us for an on-prem solution, and then also, you know, the third point would be uh, also rolling that out into our public cloud service. So, really delivering a bare metal, secure uh, container so runtime solution, both in public and private cloud. You're going to be busy this year. Oh man, <laughs> it's, it's just started, <laughs> but it's fun, it's exciting, very energizing uh, yeah. it, 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 innovations in technology. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Scott, thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jeff Frick, we're at the, at the uh, Node Summit 2015, hopefully it won't be three years before we get back again. So Scott yeah. Hammond from Joyent, he's got a busy guy. I'm Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching.